find some believers that love you, that probably already know you're battling something, and pray with them. Be open about it. My identity doesn't come from my skin color. Got it. Too many people right. think their identity is wrapped up in their skin color mm -hmm. or how they look. And right. that's that's a facade. That's a lie of from? the enemy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Total lie of the enemy. How did the liberals slowly but surely take over media, Hollywood? 95% of yeah. the networks that exist in our country are owned by the same five corporations. And they're all liberal on, and, on the side. And they have an agenda. Yeah. And it's a very liberal agenda. I think the simple answer is conservatives have been asleep. And Joe's even said it. Yeah. He's like, it's not about your own personal freedoms. You gotta do things and what's right for the community. Well, that's communism. <laughs> Other than Joe Biden and his reckless policies and his mandates is our Southern border. But that's, again, it's like yep. Joe's doing it. Kamala's complicit. Yep. Uh, Afghanistan was a, a complete debacle. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And I understand even if somebody has a desire to get to our country to make a better life for themselves. Yep. I understand that too. We're yep. the land of the free, the home of the brave. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't want to come to America, right? It's because of how the opportunities that we all have here. Right. So there's so much, yeah. but this current administration, they uh, yeah. they don't respect anything that has to do with our constitution. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. So my guest today is unapologetically patriotic, politically conservative, a Trump supporter, a black man in America, banned from flying American Airlines, an advocate for keeping America great, an author of why I couldn't stay silent, one man's battle as a black Conservative, welcome to the show, the Seven Fear Squad, David J. Harris Jr. My man, <laughs> pleasure to be with you today, brother. Likewise, so good, man. thank you for having me. I'm glad you're here, man, and uh, thank you so much for these tasty treats. We'll be munching on these throughout the Absolutely. conversation. Yeah. Um, so, brother, you've been traveling left and right, man. It's just like, uh, you know, they got a permanent locker for you at the airport here in, in, in Dallas. It, I should have one. Yeah, I need to. Yeah, I've been traveling all over the country. Did a did a speaking event at. Uh, in Colorado, Durango, like their annual Lincoln Dinner yeah. um, event. And uh, gosh, I forget in the past, it, it, all the days start to run together. But I know this next week I'll be speaking in Chicago. Really? Key, keynote, Chicago. Yeah, like keynote, my, keynote my speaker in uh, Chicago land. That's awesome, man. Where's the actual city at for those that are in the area and listening and want to check it out? For sure. Nice little plug for that. It's uh, Meridian, Meridian and Rolling Meadows. Nice. So you know where Rolling yeah, Meadows is? Just like right 30 minutes from, from Chi Chi-Town? Okay. Yeah, what type of event What type of event are you speaking at there? Um, the uh, It's the Freedom Initiative nice. Now event. Yeah, okay. Kaylee McEnany was the last keynote speaker. Really? Nice. Yeah, they have like one event a month. Wow. And so I'm the keynote for this nice. one coming up. Nice. So that's on the 20th. And then I'm speaking at an event in Las Vegas, uh, a big conference that's happening there on the 23rd, 4th, and 5th. Gotcha. I'm a keynote on one of those nights. I don't even know which night yet. Oh. Very cool, man. Very involved. Very involved in the Very active, movement. man. Very yeah. involved. Yeah, people apparently want to hear what I have to say. So, of course, I love well, talking. I uh, I want to go back to uh, 2015. So, wow. If you look here on the screen, this is a a conference that I didn't realize somewhere in the mix. You are in the mix. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that one right there. No way. Yeah. You can point yourself out. No, no, no. No, I'm just right. saying that looks like the Holiday Inn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, I was in the back. I was just standing in the back watching. <laughs> saw Patrick and loved his passion, loved what he was talking about. Yeah. And a friend of mine was actually talking to me about something similar. So I went back to him, Nick Cordano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went back and talked to him. And uh, yeah, it's when I got my feet wet with the build wealth through, you know, the best tax uh, tax savings plan for wealthy people there is. So I got got the products myself and you started- renewed your license. You just renewed your insurance I license. I just renewed my yeah. license. Yeah, well, the interesting thing is I actually didn't renew it because I'd let it, I'd let it uh, lapse. Oh, it was too to long. Start from so I had to take the test over again. So I studied in about for three days, took the test, 85%, I think it was, something like that. And then uh, I just got word back from the Texas Department of Insurance. They're like, it looks like there's an open FBI investigation on you. <laughs> So you need to clear this up. What? I'm like, that's what I said. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> what? I haven't been informed about nothing. So I don't know if it's, I was, you know, in DC for January 6th. I don't know if it's that. Yeah. I've heard yeah. some other stuff about, uh, I, I don't know how much detail I should go into, but uh, I'm on their radar. I can tell you that much. Yeah. The, the, the swamp that is the deep state yeah. that want to crush conservative voices mm -hmm. and want to want to completely destroy yeah. 
anybody that's trying to expose the narrative, the lie that they continue to put out, they want to destroy us. They want to crush us. So I'm, uh, I've got an appointment to go get a full background check yeah. to be able to show and say, hey, there's, I had one friend of mine that actually is F, uh, X, F, uh, FBI, and she did her own mm-hmm. check. And she's like, you don't come up anywhere in our system. So Unbelievable. So, but I will be back in the game. Yeah, yeah, I will be. My man, I think we need it, especially with COVID and all the all the adverse adverse reactions that are coming out. Yeah, people need to make sure they're covered. Correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah, but it's interesting how in this period, this is 2015. This yeah. is uh, when uh, Patrick's first viral video came out, which is "Life of an Entrepreneur in 90 Seconds." Wow, because it was this RV that he was touring around. Yep. America and his big old face on the side of it. Yep. I remember showing up and I'm like, who is this guy? Right yeah, yeah, yeah. Right in the back. Yep. And then uh, I was like, who is this guy? What's he talking about? But no, I was. And the thing that you and I were in the same room together hearing the same message. Yeah. But very, isn't it awesome that to know that you can go into any room, but sadly, a vast majority will just hear it, but not, do nothing with it right. because you came out of this thing. You became a change man. So speaking of background, let's talk about a little bit of background. You know, what were you doing before the David the J. Harris, media, the whole social media, media advocacy, the whole thing? So we, my wife and I actually started a health and wellness company in 2013. And so that was our main, you know, I've been, a, I've been in direct sales since I was 18 years old. My first gig with direct sales was representing a very high end air filter uh, system, home, a whole house air filter system. How old are you? Uh, 18. No yeah. kidding. Yeah, I got started when I was 18. And then by the time I was 20, I started my first company in that, Whoa. in that, uh, in your space. Yeah, in that space. And then by 22, I had two businesses, two companies, two different locations, plus a road crew. Mm-hmm. And we were doing between 150 and, and 200,000 a month in sales. Mm-hmm. So I, I felt like I was flying pretty high and I got, I got full of myself. So uh, when that mm-hmm. happens, you get full of yourself, you know, pride right, comes before a <laughs> fall. So uh, yeah, I, I was humbled greatly mm-hmm. as things shifted in the industry. But, uh, but it was all very much a good learning curve. And I really felt like God allowed mm-hmm. me to taste that kind of financial success in my 20s to prepare me for my 40s. So here I am in my 40s. You no, know, I often say that uh, I've repaid the mistakes of my 20s through my entire thirties, <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. <laughs> but he's got such as, a signature laugh, man. And so in my forties too, for me, yeah, he's for like sure. Me. But no, it's uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. So you, you and your wife got married. You guys got er, uh, married young. Yeah, I was, I was eighteen. She was sixteen. We got married. How she does was, that? How does that happen? She was walking around high school with a wedding ring on, bro. <laughs> but I knew she was the one. Wow. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to condense it, but I was a. Uh, no, I wasn't a good kid in high school. My parents separated early. I had massive uh, self, you know, insecurity issues, mm. you know, half black, half white, growing up in a predominantly white area of Northern California. The black folks, you know, a lot of them like, you know, treated me different, mm-hmm. didn't like me because most of my friends were white, not because I picked them to be that way mm-hmm. or because of their color, yep. but just that's who was in my class. That's who I hung out with. Mm-hmm. That's who lived in my neighborhood. Yep. So that's who I hung with. Meanwhile, half my black, my family's black. So, so you know, I, guess I got plenty of black cousins yep. and, and yep. friends. Yep. But uh, very insecure. And so I started uh, drinking early, mm-hmm. smoking weed early. And before I knew it, I had a connection where I could buy weed in bulk and then break it down and sell it. Uh-oh. So I was like, it was just business to me. It was just math. And then, you know, before I realized it, I'm like one of the main guys in, in Northern California <laughs> that was supplying a lot of people. My pager would go off like 50 to 100 times a day. He said pager, everybody. It's pager. A P-A-G-E-R. Yeah, pager okay. for those things before the cell phone. So I go from this drug dealing guy that had a chip on his shoulder that liked to get as many of the hot girls as possible to like me because I felt better about myself if they did. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have to sleep with them. I was actually pretty timid in that regard. Mm. But if they liked me, that made me feel good about myself. That shows you where my self-esteem was at. And then uh, I met this I met this girl that just changed everything. It's like, I really like this girl. I don't I don't need to mess with anybody else. I really mm-hmm. like this girl. So I was still my, you know, drug dealing page herself. And I went over to her house on a Saturday night. And her mom was supposed to be gone at a church retreat mm-hmm. all weekend. She wasn't supposed to come home until like Sunday evening. Yeah. So her mom was very protective, single parent. Jennifer was her only daughter. And she came in and she came, she decided to come home because she felt yeah. like God told her to go home. So she comes home, it's like 11 o'clock at night. I had just got there, so we weren't doing anything yet. Yeah. I just got there, I'm laying on her bed and her mom comes home. Boom. 
Uh-oh. And we hear her mom, Jennifer, and we're just waiting, right, for a knife, a pot, a pan, the cops, something. And she opens the door, and she's like, what's going on? And Jennifer said, nothing, we're just hanging out. She's cool. She's And her mom said, is he staying the night? <laughs> we're like, what? Are you kidding me? And she said, my, Jennifer said, yeah, he was going to. So her mom said, well, you're at least going to go to church tomorrow. And I'm like, here's my chance Holy moly, to what? look like a goody two-shoes. I said, we can go to my grandpa's church. Like, hint, hint, my grandpa's a pastor. I hadn't been going to church. Yeah. So she says, okay, and she shut the door. What? Yeah. I do not recommend that for any parent, unless you have some supernatural okay. something from God, so right? We, we got, let's, let's, let's pull up uh, Jennifer's... Uh, IG profile here. Yeah. So Jennifer, I'm not following. Feisty little J. Yeah. Right? Feisty yep. little J. And so beautiful family, bro. Thank this you, is uh so you're your dad of, of of two. Yeah. Two daughters. Two daughters. Right? Yep. That's let's reverse this. Yeah. Your daughters have some guy in a room. What does David J. Harris Junior do? Uh you ain't, do? you ain't saying the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not saying the night. We were pretty we were pretty lax with our girls too. They were really good girls. They were yeah. they were home a lot. We like to have the house. Yeah. That all the kids wanted to come over to, yeah. but uh, yeah, but no, we were. I was definitely stricter than that. Right. So the next morning we wake up, wow. and uh, I hadn't. I used to wake and bake. A wake and bake. Wake and bake. What's that? Wake up and get baked. Oh, gotcha. Let's wake say, up you know, and start can... smoking herb. Wow. There you go. Right. Our so gotcha. I woke. I woke up. I'm at her house. Her mom's making breakfast. I hadn't drank anything yet. I normally pull out a forty or something, right, mm -hmm. to drink as well. Hadn't drank anything yet, hadn't smoked anything yet, and I'm thinking, man, today seems really different. We go to church, and my pager didn't go off once all morning. Nobody knew where I was at. We mm -hmm. go to church. The service lasted three hours. Wow. Kojic. Church of God in Christ. Full gospel. Get down. Oh, yeah. No time limit. Kojic. Kojic. C-O-G-I-C. Yeah. yeah, Church of God in Christ. Christ. So uh, we get there, and all these people in the audience are standing up, and they're testifying what God is doing in their life. And it's becoming evident to me that God is real. Yeah. He's actively working in people's lives. Okay. And not only am I missing out, yeah. but I'm doing the devil's work. Uh-oh. My pager's on in church. So the church mother stands up. It's all in the very beginning of the service. The church mother stands up, little, little old black lady in her 80s. And she said she went to the, her window yeah. and she saw a big clock in the sky. Yeah. She said time is running out and people got to get right. Time is running out, and people got to get right. And Matt, it just broke me. I literally started crying. Church, man. I started yeah. crying, right? And I felt like the gravity of my life in that moment right yeah. now and this the, the awareness of this awesome God and, and how wrong I was living. So I, after I'm shaking, I'm crying, I stood up. Yeah. And Matt, I said, all I remember saying is, I'm glad I'm still here after 18 years. Like just acknowledging that God had gotten me through a lot of difficult times. Yeah. I'm glad I'm still here after 18 years. And the power and the presence of God hit and flooded me. And yeah. I took off literally running around the church. Wow. I ran around the church. <sighs> felt like a thousand tons of weights were lifted off my shoulders. Yeah. Things visibly looked different. Yeah. And I knew without a shadow of a doubt, God was real. He loved me. Yeah. Um, and that he wanted to be in my life. And so I immediately was like, I can leave everything else in this. I can leave everything in the world behind, mm -hmm. all the party and drink and drugs, all of it. I can leave it all behind. Just like that. But what about this girl, Jennifer? Okay. And I felt like he said, don't worry about her. Just keep loving on me. And so when I did turn and look at her, Matt, she had her hands raised. You see people raise their hands. It's like a sign of surrender. You know, or like a little kid reaching up to their daddy. You know, it's just mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. adoration. She had her hands raised and she had tears streaming down her cheek. And I heard God speak to me and say, there's your bride. So that was October 10th, 1993. We got, uh, the anniversary was a couple of days ago. We got married April 17th, 1994. So yeah, 27 years. Wow. Yeah. Holy moly. So yeah. I'm, I'm just curious, where, where's your parents this whole time? Yeah. So my, I was living with my mom okay. during that time because mm -hmm. my dad had kicked me out at 16. Okay. So I was living with my mom until I was 18 and she kicked me out because <laughs> I was just a drug dealing thug, right? So I, I shared it with my parents. My mom was excited. My dad was like reserved. Okay, we'll see. You know, everybody wants to see. It's like, yeah. Yeah, somebody really can somebody really change like that overnight? Yes, God can do it. He's done it before and he did it with, my, with me. Uh, and that doesn't mean I was perfect from there on out. Yeah. You know, yeah. Lord knows I've made plenty of mistakes, yeah. you know, yeah. since that day. But he set me on a course. He set me on a path 
that uh, that made me who I am. So my mom was uh, ecstatic. She was so excited. She she was a believer and loved yeah. the Lord until she passed in two thousand nine, went to heaven. And uh, my dad is a preacher right now. He took wow. over for my grandpa wow. like fifteen years ago. It's interesting too because that happened to you at eighteen, but it's it's not like it stayed that way either. So you kind of oh no, you know you had your an, another uh, situation where God came into your life, and I think was, this was in because that picture was taken in Reading. California. Yeah. There's a big church out there. Uh, yeah, Bethel, Bethel Church. Yeah, yeah that's Bethel. my church. Yeah, that was my home okay. church. And uh, I think you were sharing a story, I think, on, on, on PBD's podcast where, you know, you're 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 uh, uh, going to church and your life's array. I think you're hooked on some form of... Crack. You're hooked on crack. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to church. Yeah, and this is 11 years ago. So again, like when I said, <laughs> it wasn't all peaches and roses sure, from, sure. you know, when I was 18, I still had a lot of inner issues that I had to deal with mm -hmm. and that I just continue to try to brush, you know, suppress and just yeah. try to, you know, not deal with it. But uh, for me, it would always come out in, in some form of abuse, some form of, uh, of uh, chemical abuse. You know, for me, it was alcohol would always just then lead to, especially once you've done, you know, Coke, yeah. I had only, somebody actually tricked me into trying crack. Mm -hmm. If you can be tricked, which I feel like I was, because I thought I was getting some coke, yeah, yeah, and it wouldn't chop up. And he's like, "Let's smoke it." And we smoked it. And he's like, "You like that? That's crack." And I was like, "Okay, so that's new. Now I've done it, and I like it." <laughs> right? Right. People wouldn't do it if it right. didn't feel right. good. It feels right. crazy. Yeah. But that's the problem: right. is that it takes over. You know, every other desire that you've right. got becomes how can I do more of that? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I had plenty of. Plenty of demons that I still had to uh, address and and get you know uprooted out of out of my soul. It wasn't until you did go back to church that one time you were as you're sharing your testimony mm -hmm. on PBD's podcast where the church was just jam packed and cars were just lined up, but for some reason you just had a parking spot right right in front or something like that, right? Yeah. So my wife had left. My my wife and I were separated twice in the 27 years we we've been married. Which again is hope for people that are either separated right now or mm -hmm. dealing with a with a rough you know situation, right. is it's like there's always hope. Don't give up on God, right? Pray yeah. and just believe and and do what He says, do what He directs you to do. So my my uh, uh, was twelve and a half years ago, thirteen years ago is when I tried coke. Uh, I was going through a really rough patch in life, so alcohol turned to coke, and then coke turned to crack, and then I was hooked on crack for almost two years, and. Um, we moved back to Redding. So I was in Southern California. We lived in Laguna Beach. We moved back to Redding. My wife had no idea what I was doing. I weighed about 180 pounds, Jeez. 170. You're, I'm, big, you're a big dude right now. You are two, I'm like, 270. God, damn. Yeah. So 100 pounds less than we are right now. Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. I looked sunken in and my wife didn't know what was going on, but she knew something wasn't right. How old were your and babies at this time? They were teenagers. Wow. Yeah, I mean, 11 years ago, they were wow. 12 and 11 and 13. Wow. So, uh, and, but that's, you know, there's an enemy out there that wants to steal, to kill, kill, and destroy, devour, yeah, yeah. you know, and he'll yeah. do whatever he can. And, and if we don't deal with our internal stuff and address it when yeah. we know there's a problem, yeah. then, you know, it's, you never know when it can lash out. And some people, again, this isn't just saying everybody should drink. Some people can handle it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But some people, it's like, if you drink and you black out and that happens more than once or twice, that's a problem. And for me, when I black out, I'm not in control but I'm still moving, my body's still moving. And that's dangerous yeah. for others and myself. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm like smoking crack all night and then wake up and then try to work enough to make some money yeah. to pay some bills and get some more, right? So my wife had left, she took the kids and I met a friend of mine that prayed with me, uh, prayed for me. I don't know that I let him pray with me, but I had, got a, I had just gotten in front of like an ounce of Coke and you, you, you know, you process the Coke down into crack. Mm -hmm. It was fronted to me. I was supposed to pay him back. I was just doing it all. And I had gotten to the end of it. And my wife's left I'm in this big 3,500 square foot house in Reading. Um, people had stolen stuff from my business. They had like everything, everybody was just, it was pillage time. Everybody was yeah. just taking everything from me. And, and, we, and uh, you were conscious of it? That you were aware of what was going I on? I was aware of it. Yeah. But it was like, you know, what? They're, they've stolen something, they're gone. You know, this yeah. person's gone. Right. So it's like, what are you gonna do? So I just, I'd gotten to the end of where I was at and just knew I'd made an absolute mess of my life. And I just prayed, I said, God, what do you want me to do? I've made an absolute mess of my life, what do you want me to do? 
and I heard him say, go to church. And I'm like, are you kidding me? On a Sunday morning <laughs> at like 11 to, to Bethel, where there's like two, 3,000 people? Yeah. Have you been to, I'm like, I'm arguing, right? And I just heard again, real soft, go to church. So when I stopped arguing with God, I was like, I'm gonna go. And I got in the car and I turned on K-Love or Air One Radio, Christian Radio, and just started sobbing, just like, yeah. just sobbing. I get up to the, I get to the church and it's, the church is so packed, the cars are lining the street all the way to the church. It's probably a quarter mile up to the church. And then I get to the top of the, the hill where the church is at and I, the parking lot I see is just totally full. And then I see the other sign for the other side that says parking lot full. There's a sign that says parking lot full. And I keep driving and the very first parking spot was open. So I park. Then I walk inside and the church is so packed that the overflow of the lobby is full. So I walk over to the doors to look in the auditorium and it's just packed, people wow. everywhere. And I get a tap on my shoulder. And this lady says, are you looking for a seat? You can have mine. I'm right in the middle, third row back from the front on the left. So I'm like looking up like, okay, God. So I go sit it's down. Away. I go sit down and right then the pastor's getting up to speak. Like they'd already done worship and announcements. The pastor walks up to speak, uh, Eric Johnson, and he says, today, I'm going to talk to you about the prodigal son no. coming home <laughs> and and walking into his inheritance. So that was the message, right? So I'm just like, I'm totally balling. I'm like, this, this is for me, you know? So I shared with a few of the pastors there yeah. that hadn't seen me in a long time. Yeah. I shared with them what I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, and they prayed for me. And uh, I never touched crack again after wow. that. Never touched it again. Kept going back. About three months later, God restored my marriage with my wife. So we got back together yeah. April 1st, yeah. 2011. And, uh, yeah, it's been it's been on an upward trajectory since then. And then it was... 2013, uh, 14? Or that what? was 2011. 11? Yeah. Uh, and then in uh, 2017, yeah. I went and did a deep dive internal, internal spirit, soul kind of clean out. Yeah. Um, with this organization called uh, Restoring the Foundations okay. org, and they map out like your your lineage, you know, your mom's side of the family, dad's side of the family, up to the grandparents on both sides. Hmm. What kind of issues they dealt with? What kind of sin issues they dealt with? Why they died? And they, and they map out all this thing. It's this in, it's an engineer. He's like a NASA engineer okay. that God downloaded. Yeah. Here's how, especially for leaders and pastors that feel like they're supposed to have it all together. Who do they talk to? Uh, this is the roadmap to bring them through and give them uh, freedom. And it's all about uncover, uncovering ungodly beliefs that we hold huh. at a subconscious level. Huh. And when I went through this program, like a three-day workshop with just me and this couple, they uncovered, we uncovered uh, 13 ungodly beliefs that I held at a subconscious level that I didn't even know were a part of my makeup, but would drive me to make decisions. And I'll share two of them. One. If you can believe this, I had a subconscious belief that just inherently I make bad decisions. Just automatic. Just automatic. I make bad decisions. Now tell me how much I'm going to mess up in life if inherently I feel like I make bad decisions because that's how I'm wired. So that Did came. in your life just constantly uh, what, tell you that and reinforce that growing up? What it was, was my parents divorced. My, my dad picked me up from school and we just left. My mom was not there. I didn't see her for like two months. Then I see her in the courthouse and the judge pulled me into his chambers. I'm nine years old. And he says, son, who do you want to live with? Your mom or your dad? And I said, well, my dad, because I look more like him. He's black. He's a male, right? My mom is Caucasian white, you know, Irish descent. So I said, my dad. And then growing up with my dad, he didn't he didn't give me love the way I'm designed to receive it. If you've heard of the five love languages, sure, you know, Gear words time. of affirmation, yeah. physical touch, gifts and surprises, uh, uh, quality, uh, quality time, time yep. and uh, words, of affirmation. words of affirmation. So I'm words of affirmation and physical touch. My mom used to always like fuzzy me and hug me and tell me, you know. We have the just, same love language in do order. We? <laughs> in order. <laughs> we connected in the show. Yeah, we did. <laughs> So my mom would give that to me, but my dad was not that. He okay. was like, he prov he was a provider. You had a roof over your head. You always had food. I always had clothes. Okay. He was a protector. Um, he was more quality time, I guess you'd say. And uh, so my whole upbringing, I hated that I lived with my dad. 
because when I'd go to my mom twice for two months out of the year, she would give me all the words of affirmation and call me King David and, you know, tell me all these things God, you know, wants to yeah. do in my life and just all this stuff. And then I go back to my dad's house for 10 months and get none of it. Wow. And, and love my dad. He's amazing, but that's just not how he's wired. Sure. Right. So I resented my dad tremendously. And what I didn't realize was at a subconscious level, I held myself responsible because I'm the one that told the judge I wow. want to live with my dad. That was all unwound in that 15 hour session I did with that couple for restoring the foundations. So that was one of them. And then the way God freed me from that was, he said, David, I knew you'd say your dad and I wanted you to live with your dad. It, he said it was better that you'd lived with your dad in that season than your mom. What I didn't realize is my mom was dealing with her own stuff. And it wouldn't have been good if I stayed with my mom. Got it. So that freed me from that whole thing. Yeah. And then there was another one, I won't get into all the details, but another one of the 13 ungodly beliefs is that the women that I love the most and need the most will leave me. I held that at a subconscious level. And then part of it's kind of explained in the way my parents divorced and I just didn't see my mom anymore. Yeah. Right? So that's just two of those 13 wow. ungodly beliefs that I held. So when I, there's 13 of those yeah. that got uncovered, released, and then the truth yeah. replaced the lie. Yeah. And when that happened, Matt, I felt yeah. like a brand new person. Yeah. I felt liberated. I felt free. And the voices that I used to hear that, that could be, you know, when I was, when I was deep in my addiction, alcohol addiction, it's all, everything's around a drink. When, when are we going to go get a drink? You know, let's go get a drink. And everybody's, it's like such a, yeah. such a common thing too, yeah. right? So it was for me though, it would be, I can hit the gas station, get a drink and yeah. have a beer in my car yeah. you know, before I go over here. Yeah. All those voices stopped. I didn't hear any of it. It was all clear and clean. I felt like, if I could say it, I felt like a virgin spiritually again, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that was the beginning of me uh, laying down alcohol. I laid it down for two years had a brief stint because my wife and I were going through something really serious and she was she was drinking a lot. And then we both laid it down again together for the first time ever in our marriage mm. a year ago. So she just crossed one year of sobriety. Wow, wow. And my year's coming up this month. Gotcha. Go, go uh, feisty little Jay. Yeah, feisty little <laughs> Jay. Go feisty little Jay, guys. And her story's amazing yeah. and she still hasn't completely come out of her shell yet wow. to talk about all of it, but wow. she feels led to. That's it, man. Well, we're looking for that uh, for her to come out. Jennifer, if you listen to us right now, Cannot wait for you to share that because a lot of women, I believe, will be freed by your testimony yeah. and how God is working in your life. Uh, let's talk about you, David. By the way, side note, everybody, if this was incognito, we would have a very difficult time finding David J. Harris Jr. If you go to incognito right now, we'll do a screenshot of this. But even his full, even your full name, we cannot find. If I wasn't connected with you already, I couldn't just stumble across your profile and so on Instagram on, his, on Instagram yeah Facebook does that to me too oh, but apparently they don't like what this brother has to say <laughs> have, has something I said today offended I, you I, not, not at all I mean <laughs> I mean you have a beautiful t-shirt on so hey <laughs> that's the Christian version let's go Brandon that's right <laughs> <laughs> it's a Christian version. Yeah, let's uh, go, Brandon. Um, uh, Get it at davidharrisjr.com. That's it. Good plug. Um, <laughs> how, do, how, does your, how does your faith now? You know, well, by the way, before I go into that, if there's somebody watching this right now, and they're going through some stuff. Mm -hmm. They're going through some stuff. Substance-wise, you know, internally-wise, upbringing-wise, financial-wise, and they have certain strongholds, certain things that just keep them from getting to where they want to go. Is there certain steps you would give them in order to break through where they're currently at right now? Yeah, I think there's some very basic things that anybody has to do. We, we're very intelligent creatures, right? God created us all to, to brilliantly. I mean, there's, we're, our mind's faster than any supercomputer on the planet. We know, and, and our hearts, I think even is a greater supercomputer. That's why the electromagnetic current from our heart goes out like six feet, right? Which is very interesting when they say stay six feet apart. I mean, that's a whole other story, but uh, Whoa. yeah, our, our hearts are our hearts are amazing, right? <laughs> our, our hearts are amazing. So, so together, um, we're very intelligent people. If a person is battling something, they know. So the first thing they have to do is stop acting like they don't have a problem. Okay, right? You have to face it. You have to face it and say, okay, I know this is an issue. I know this, whatever it is is either keeping me from becoming everything I feel like I can be, everything God created you to be, or it's hurting relationships. 
right? Or it's keeping you from being your best at work. But especially if it's hurting family mm-hmm. or friendships, it's a problem. So the first thing is acknowledge it. Acknowledge it's a problem. And then spiritually, pray about it. Give it to God. God, I know this is an issue. I know this is something that's keeping me from being who you've created me to be. Mm-hmm. And I'm tired of fighting with it. Right. Help me. Help me yep. get through this. Help me get over this. Uh, and then and then give it to God. Like spiritually, to see yourself giving it to God. And then, and then the next step I would say is find somebody else. Find some believers that love you that probably already know you're battling something and pray with them. Be open about it. We, we constantly try to hide things. And the funny mm-hmm. thing is, we're not even hiding it from anybody. When we've got a problem, everybody around us that yeah, loves us yeah, know yeah, we have that problem. Yeah. It's, it's a facade to think we're actually hiding it from anybody. Yeah. So confront it head on and get with some loved ones or some friends that are believers that believe in you and pray with them about it. And then get into some kind of a you know yeah. workshop. For me, the deep dive, again, was restoringthefoundations.org. That's what really broke a lot. I mean, it's, yeah. that would, that's what broke the most of it. Wow. Uh, really, like, new person. Wow. Just internally, it healed so much. Is there any investment to so go much. to something like that? Yeah, I think it's like 1500 bucks. It's not even Got a lot. But really? it's, gotcha. but it's, 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 it's a, the couple that I saw yeah. was just them. Yeah. And it was 15 hours. It, just yeah. me. Yeah. Right? So it was just, and very strategic in how they did it all. But get serious about it. Ask for help yep. and then pray and ask God to guide you where to go yeah. and then get involved in your local church, right? Or go, go at least to your local church or find a church that somebody that you know to that, you know, that you feel is not battling those things or has overcome those things. So find out prayer is not enough. You actually have to have some, you've got to take steps. action. Yeah. yeah. Faith yeah. without works is dead. Yeah. You've got to take action mm-hmm. and, and then just know as well that God's got you. Hmm. We have such a good, good father. Yeah, amen to that. He's a good papa. Yeah. He loves his kids. Yeah. And when we come to him with an open heart and an honest heart, he's right there to right. help us. Yep. And my life's living proof. I mean, I should literally be amen dead. I almost that. overdosed on crack cocaine. I literally almost overdosed. Wow. I shouldn't even be here. And the fact that I'm here and that God's done all this in my life over the last yeah. several years, it's just a testament to his goodness. I, I don't take credit for it. I just tried to say yes. So let's talk about that. You know, 2015, 2016, you and I are unknowingly in the same room. Nah, right. And you and I both make decisions out of that room to come, to come out of that, to do something different within our lives. And so we had an idea. So, um, how, so what was your, what was your steps in 2015 to 2016? You know, the, the motivation for you writing a book, why I couldn't stay silent. What, what started to manifest and change? So you know what, this is who I am. Who's here. Who's who I got to be. And how, how, how did you start, you know, taking the first steps of building your brand there? Well, it just kind of happened for me. I would post videos. I had like 1,500 friends on Facebook. I wasn't on Instagram or Twitter. And I would just share different things that were on my heart. But right after the third debate between Trump and Hillary, there was such a stark dif- difference between where I believe these two people wanted to take our country that as soon as the debate was over, if you remember the third debate, mm-hmm. right, like, Trump called Hillary out on so many things. You'd go to jail. Yeah, you'd go to jail. Good <laughs> yeah. thing that our justice system isn't like Donald Trump because you'd be in jail. Yeah. All these things. And Hillary kept dodging all these serious questions and just kept trying to attack his character. But the biggest issue for me was their stance on unborn lives. Okay. Right? Hillary was for what we're seeing to happen in our country right now in right. blue states. Right. Abortion, any reason, any time, up to any point before birth. And now in certain Democrat states, they're already talking about infanticide where the baby could yeah. be born. Wow. And if the mother deems that she's not able to care for that kid, oh, they kill the baby. Jeez. Now, what what really separates that baby yeah. and having rights from the two, three inches from being inside the womb to seconds later being outside the womb? Is there really a separation? It's still a baby, baby inside the womb. Course. And now science has disproved that it's, it's larva or a clump of cells. Yeah. It's got a heartbeat. Beep. It can feel pain. It has yeah. fingers and toes. It's a baby. Yeah. So Hillary and the Democrat stance is abortion's okay. It's a woman's right. It's her body. Mm-hmm. Science has disproved that. It's not her right. It's not her body. It's another little innocent human being that can't defend itself. Yeah. So for me, the way Trump was so unapologetically pro-life, I'm like, how could we put a person in office that is okay with abortion. Like when Obama came out, 
I was excited for the opportunity to vote for a black man as president. I mean, I didn't think I'd see that in my lifetime. Sure. And then my mom, God bless good parents that don't tell their kids what to do, but tell them to research the issues that matter to them. My mom said, look at how he's voted on the issues that matter to you. Wow. So there was a conversation at least growing up. Yeah. Well, it was when Obama you oh, know, was okay. running. So that's 2008 and 12. But uh, so I went and looked at his, his record on abortion, and I found that he had voted against a bill that would have provided medical treatment to babies that survived abortions. Wow. And I saw that he voted in favor of late-term partial birth abortion. Wow. Where they literally dismember a baby in the third trimester. It's yeah. a fully grown baby. Yeah, Babies can come out that are, yeah. yeah. he's kicking already, yeah. I said, I don't care what color he is. Mm -hmm. He's not getting my vote. You're talking about Obama, yeah, yeah, okay. It's about Obama. So that's when I kind of woke up politically to what was, you know, what was going on. So then after that third debate between Trump and Hillary, I just went live on Facebook. I ranted for like 14 minutes. I said, as a Christian, as a husband, as a father, as a business owner, and as a member of the black community. And for me, it's in that order. Okay. Right? I'm a believer first. Yeah. I believe we're spirit beings in these meat suits. Right? Meat suits, but yeah. home is, earth is not our eternal home. Sure. Right? We're spiritual beings first. So as a spiritual being and understanding that and as a believer, that's who I am. That's my identity first. Then I'm a husband. Then I'm a father. And I'm a business owner. And I'm also a member of the black community. Sure. My identity doesn't come from my skin color. Got it. Too many people right. think their identity is wrapped up in their skin color mm -hmm. or how they look. And where that's that's a facade. It's a lie from? of the enemy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Total lie of the enemy. There's so much insecurity in that. Yeah. Um, so I just went off for like 14 minutes and the video went viral. Some huge pages picked it up, wow. saw it, reshared it. Uh, I'd get video views of like 1,000 to 2,000, mm -hmm. you know, a video. If it got 2,000 views, I'd be like, wow, look at that. That thing hit 50,000 views that night. Wow. 100,000 the next morning, 200,000 the next night, three, 400,000, over 400,000 views. And my inbox was flooded from men, women, black, Hispanic, Asian, white, yeah. um, you name it. And an overarching theme in those videos, yep. in, the, in the messages, was, you know, my whole, my whole family are Democrats, and I'm a Democrat, and I was going to vote for Hillary until I saw your video. Wow. And now I have to vote for Trump because I have to vote for life. So it wasn't the person. It was the policy. It, it was the values. Which the is what it should always be. Yeah. We're not voting for a celebrity yeah. or a person or what their name is. It's how do they vote on the issues that matter to you? Yep. So I like to think in my own way, I swayed the needle a little bit, mm -hmm. right? 400,000 views. And I got a lot of hate mail in there too. People, you know, the black and Hispanic and even the white community throwing racial, racial slurs. It's like they feel emboldened because so much of the black community are calling us Uncle Toms. I mean, Snoop Dogg last year, he blasted me, right, on his Instagram to his, I don't know how many tens of millions of followers, put my picture right on his page, wow. calling us the Coon Bunch. <laughs> oh, man. Me and Candace Owens That's and right. Terrence Williams and yeah. several others. And he doesn't even think that way. I know people that know him personally, that personally know him. They're like, he doesn't think that way. So where do you so think where they came from? They're getting paid. Got it. Put that out there. So yeah. many of so so many a. I know somebody knows The Rock. Yeah, sure. Dwayne yeah. Johnson mm -hmm. uh, personally, and they're like, uh, he don't he don't really think that way. But if they don't go with that liberal narrative, they'll get cut off. So so how did how did the liberal how did the liberals slowly but surely take over media, Hollywood? Everything out there. How how do they get so influential over time? Well, that's a that's a deep and a large discussion. I think the simple answer is conservatives have been asleep. Christians, believers have been asleep. I mean, there's a, this whole separation of church and state. I think really started it because when that happened, I think it was back in the '70s. This whole separation of church and mm -hmm. state. It was almost like the church is like, is takes the, takes this approach. Uh, and then the Johnson Amendment, when that came out, mm -hmm. where you lose your 501c3 status, if you from the pulpit start to talk about, you know, start to talk about politics, yeah. it was separating it. It's a divide and conquer tactic. If the believers in this country that believe that pro-life should be law of the land, it's an unborn baby. People always use, oh, what about rape and incest? All these, That makes up like less than a percent, like a half a percent right. of all abortions. Abortion is being used as... The standard, it's, it's, the, it's the rarity of the situation. It's a, yeah, it's an extreme rarity. Yeah. 
right? Less than a percent of all abortions yeah. are because of rape. Yeah. Yet that's immediately what people jump to. It's being used as birth control. Yep. If the if the believers just voted together in unison to support uh, politicians, individuals yep. running for office, yep. that stood in line with godly principles, which I think not killing a baby is should be pretty easy to say that's a yeah. good and godly sure. principle, then we wouldn't have as many people in office that think it's okay to murder and dismember a baby up in the up to the third trimester. Right. So I think conservatives have been asleep. We've been believing that. We have not been aware, a lot of us, to the very nefarious and very strategic plan of not just the enemy. I believe there's an enemy of our souls. There's an enemy of, of us as people, but a very strategic plan to destroy America from within. And that goes back to uh, that goes back to you know Marxism. That goes mm -hmm. back to rules for radicals. Yep. That goes back to that was. Obama's mentor, mm -hmm. Rules for Radicals. Yep. Uh, and it talked about specifically how to destroy the United States from within. And if you go back, if you go find Rules for Radicals and you look at like there's 20 rules, you look at all the things that they say to do from uh, demonizing and uh, the church to infiltrating schools, the education system, to exploiting uh, homo the homosexual lifestyle into every other lifestyle, all the LGBT yep. stuff, right? Yep. And I've got a lot of gay friends. Yep. Right? I'm not against anybody, mm -hmm. period. I'm not yep. against anybody. Right. And they know how I feel and how I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, that's just a, it's a sin issue that, that's between them and God. Yep. But there's an agenda behind the whole LGBTQ movement that the, my friends that are gay don't yep. like. Wow. They're like, we're not like that. Yep. We're, we're, not, we, we're not trying to push all this stuff on the kids. Yep. We're not trying to push, you know, uh, male, you know, little boy love. Yep. Right, all this pedophilia stuff, which is where it's going. Speaking of which, uh, DC Comics just released a uh, coming out party for Superman yeah. and his boyfriend. Isn't that crazy? Wait, and I saw the statistics. Yep. It's like 0.3% of our country yep. identify as transgender, mm -hmm. and it's 3% identify. Some people say five. Even if it's 5% identify as homosexual, why should something mainstream be viewed as... Yeah. The, the normal way of life for all Americans. Mm -hmm. So it's been a slow eroding. Yep. But the biggest thing is believers uh, and conservatives who've been asleep, hoping and believing that it was all, you know, that everything's just gonna keep getting better or, or yeah. not get worse. You know, when I hear uh, this, this Democrat, him saying, don't ask what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. You know, you, you, hear, uh, you hear JFK say that. Yeah. If you slide that forward to 2021, 2022, that's not a democratic message. That's no. that, that's a that's a conservative message. It is. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's amazing how it slid so far yeah. to the left where even the JFK would not be even be considered a No, he wouldn't be considered a Democrat. Democrat today. Well, that's why Ronald Reagan left the Democrat Party. He said I didn't leave them. They left me. Hmm. The centrist Democrats yeah. of yeah. yesterday are really conservatives in in value and nature as far as you know, prioritizing our country, putting our kids first, uh, being being even conservative when it comes to pro life issues. Mm -hmm. uh, these 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 are basic things now that are totally against what this current administration wants. Right. And Joe's even said it. Yeah. He's like, it's not about your own personal freedoms. You got to do things and what's right for the community. <laughs> well, that's communism. <laughs> Schwarzenegger, f your freedoms. Yeah. After he came here and made a fortune <laughs> off of his freedom. <laughs> So, so how, how does uh, how does somebody is if they're so confused today about what's going on in media and the majority of the millennials, the majority of Gen Z are are gathering their social or they're, or they're gathering their news from social media. I mean, when I was growing up, it was from newspapers. I mean, you were growing yeah, up as newspapers. Right. Yeah, yeah. Today it's social media, and 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 we all know now of the the, uh, the fact that Facebook with that uh, whole Netflix special that they're just showing you more of what you're you know, what you're clicking on, that's right. not necessarily having an objective way to show you information. Yeah. So, yeah, so Facebook, Google. Yep. All of them. Yeah. So your, your, your daughters, I mean, uh, if I, if I'm a, if I'm a kid of the Harris family and I'm at home with you, how, how does dad go about teaching his family about uh, politics and how they should, uh, uh, how should they go about voting and where they should stand with their beliefs and well, I probably these days, because I don't live at home, you know, they, they, they both have their own places, but they listen to my podcast. So, Do they? Yeah, they listen to my podcast. <laughs> so yeah, cool. My, my daughter, my 23-year-old, she's still yeah. in California, soon to be moving here. She's going to be moving to, to Texas. Uh, Texas. Wow. She's going to be working for our, our company. Yeah. 
And wow. uh, but she'll text me little things she hears on my podcast all the time. Wow. So I say find podcasts of people that uh, that you believe are trying to give you the truth. Mine, yeah. the David J. Harris Jr. podcast. That's yeah. what I focus on, trying to bring mm -hmm. the truth of what the massive mainstream media doesn't bring. Yeah. Understand that ninety five percent of yeah. the networks that exist in our country are owned by the same five corporations, and they're all liberal on, and on side, and they have an agenda, yeah. and it's a very liberal agenda. So can you think, do you think you're actually going to get real authentic news yeah. from a news source yeah. that is biased? Yeah. It's like, understand that first and foremost. Right. And then go find some voices that are trying to either expose that and are sharing something different than you're not seeing on the mainstream media. And then, uh, you know, dive in. How do you, how do you explain the 40% uh, uh, the, the drop in CNN ratings? Trump's not in office. <laughs> he had nothing to talk about. Yeah, they, I mean, they still try to bash him. Yeah. It's like the it's like the Daily Show guy. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Kevin. What's his name? The light skinned brother that has the Daily Show. Oh, uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, Daily Show. Let's see. Let's let's do Daily Show host. Uh, uh, hey, Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. Yeah. Yep. He still bashes on Trump. I'm like, Trump's not even in office anymore, and he's still posting posts memes. Yep. And posting videos to just slam on Trump because they have nothing else of substance to talk about. Trying That's not even on a substance. Yeah. It's all reaction. It's clickbait yeah. stuff. And they're trying to hold on to their base yeah. that was so anti-Trump because the mainstream media, again, mm -hmm. these five uh, these five corporations that own the media, had were hell-bent yeah. on skewing the view yeah. of Donald Trump to the yeah. American people. Yeah. So they made their living off of that. Yeah. Just like the COVID stuff, the, the CNN clips that got exposed. Sure. They want to put a death count up there because yeah. they want the clicks because they, they know that fear sells. They want yeah. to keep their people afraid. So I think people are waking up to that, especially now underneath this current administration yeah. that is a complete disaster. Complete disaster on every front. What, what, and he's still coming for more of our freedoms. Sure. It's, making, it's making people wake up. So what do you think are the biggest threats right now in America? The southern border. Okay, they'd be at the top of your list. Absolutely, top of the list. Okay, yeah, our our southern border is is chaos. We're not hearing all the truth about what's happening. Uh, there's about 1.5 million illegals that have come into this country, and don't get me wrong, I'm for legal immigration. Sure. Right, sure, I'm a I'm I'm an immigrant family, of course. Yeah, Here. I'm for legal yeah, immigration, yeah. and I understand even if somebody has a desire to get to our country to make a better life for themselves. Yeah. I understand that too. We're yeah. the land of the free, the home of the brave. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't want to come to America? Right, it's because of how the opportunities that we all have here. Right, but there's a process, right? But I'm also not naive to think that there are nefarious, evil people that would yeah. love to just get into our country because sure. they hate America. Yeah, yeah, it's and not right a political now, asylum. Everybody's no. trying to claim political asylum from where? How come they didn't go to Venezuela? <laughs> no, I, I, I heard the I heard the president of the Border Patrol uh, Union say that the 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 UN has designated or, or acknowledged 190, I believe the number is 190 or 192 nations is how many nations the UN acknowledges, okay. right? right? Right. They've apprehended people from 150 different nations. On the southern, southern border. At our southern border. Holy moly. So it is not people in Mexico, just people in yeah. Mexico that are trying to get in. They're, they're arresting people and that's just how many they arrest. That, that for every slip through. For yeah. everyone they arrest, they fear there's three that slip through. Yeah, yeah. And the cartels are smart. When yeah. people think about the cartels, you know, depending on what shows you watch, if you're seeing something that's got to do with the cartels, you know, they could be, you know, they'll they'll kill people and you know they're a bunch of drug drug people, whatever. They're smart business people. Sure. They want to make money. They want to mm -hmm. make as much as possible. So the cartels are using this open border that this current administration is is giving them mm -hmm. to make a fortune from getting people. God knows where around the world to our southern border and into our country. And how many of those people are terrorists? They've already apprehended multiple terrorists that are on terrorist watch lists. So I think the number one threat to our country right now, um, other than Joe Biden and his reckless policies and his mandates, is our southern border. But that's, again, it's like yep. Joe's doing it. Kamala's complicit. Yep. Uh, Afghanistan was a, a complete debacle. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I completely agree with that. I mean, you just they, they just got upgraded. 80, yeah, 80, 80, upgrade, some build, $80 billion dollar in equipment. Build the they Taliban stuff. back better. Oh. <laughs> Should be a slogan. So there's so much, yeah. but this current administration, they uh, yeah. they don't respect anything that has to do with our Constitution. 
they are trying to do what, what Obama did. Obama actually said it. He wanted to fundamentally transform the foundation of our country. Hmm. Joe is doing that, that exact thing. And if the, he's continued to, like I, I said on my own podcast, uh, the David J. Harris Jr. podcast, I said for a year before the election, if for some Hail Mary reason Joe Biden gets in office, A, I said within a year or two, Kamala would probably take over. Because Joe's 78. Yeah. He, his yeah. cognitive decline is yeah. showing. It's very much so. And now he's in yeah. office. Yeah. So I'm saying if there's a Hail Mary chance that we can get Trump back in office, because I absolutely believe the last election was fraudulent, mm -hmm. the Arizona audit is proving that. If the Georgia audit, the Wisconsin audit, the Pennsylvania yeah. audit, if all those audits that need to be done come out and show that the rightful winner was yeah. not who the electors went for, then there's no statute of limitations on fraud. Trump should be appointed and put in office. That's why he continues to say, yeah. yep. I never conceded. Once you concede, it's over. Yep. He continues to say that for a reason. So I'm saying if there's a Hail Mary chance of a reason, <laughs> Matt, that we can get Trump back in to yeah. immediately start yeah. unwinding and undoing all this mess, uh, we better hope and pray it happens. Because I don't think by yeah. 2024, uh, even 2022, we should take back the House and the Senate in 2022, but we'd still have this administration. It would be a, a lame duck till 2024. But uh, we, 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 we need help. How do you explain a lot of, I mean, you have a t-shirt called Don't California My Texas. So yeah. You buy it. Yep. DavidHarrisJr.com. How do you explain then, you know, a lot of liberals then fleeing to red states? Well, because the the tyrannical mandates, like Gavin Newsom, but they're the ones who voted them th those those mandates in, and they, I think they allowed I those politicians in. And I think the California uh, election for governor, I think that was fraudulent, as well as recall. Oh, the recall election, yeah, oh, yeah. I think that was completely fraudulent. So that just shows you how deep, right? They feel like they've got everything in control. So I don't think there's any hope for blue states until they actually get rid of all the voting machines. So they're leaving. My hope is that when they leave and come to a red state like Texas. Right. They don't vote the same way. Mm -hmm. yep. Don't vote for the same people that just created the mess you left. So, yeah, don't California, my Texas, Florida. Wait, why, do you, why don't you think it's such a, why do you think it's such a conflict for people to have voter ID? I mean, if I fire Because it's racist, Matt. Have you heard? <laughs> Brown people like <laughs> us, we can't, we can't find a library. That included. We don't have an ID. <laughs> we don't know how to, you know, we don't know how to do those things, according to Joe. Yeah. Joe Biden said that literally. Yeah. He's yeah. like, "Yeah, well, they, they inner city kids. They don't they don't have access to a library. They may yeah. not be able to. You know, that's a bunch of hogwash. Total BS. Mm -hmm. You got to use ID for, especially if you're on welfare. You got to have an ID to cash a car, cash yeah. a check, yeah. government yeah. check. You yeah. need it for alcohol. People need it for alcohol. You need it for movies if they're if you're over eighteen. You need it to buy a train ticket, bus trick, bus ticket, sure. airline ticket. Get it, get you need an ID. Yeah. yeah, you can get an ID. Anybody yeah. can get a state ID. Yeah." So this whole not, this whole notion that it's racist is just asinine. Yeah. But yet that's, and it's crazy to me that the party that literally founded the KKK, founded the KKK, sure. fought for Jim Crow laws, mm -hmm. segregation, poll taxes, fought against the civil rights movement, voted against the civil rights bill of the 1860s. That same party, we're now all of a sudden supposed to believe is the champion for, for black rights in this country. It's well, how, how come then the majority of the black vote goes goes Democrat? You got to unwind that all the way back to the uh, the vote with Barry Goldwater and Lyndon Baines Johnson. Okay, And Barry Goldwater was a conservative. He was a Republican. And he understood that the way the Civil Rights uh, Act of the 1960s was written, that it was actually going to give blacks the ability to go work in some of these, these uh, cities, those metropolises that were mm -hmm. back in the day. But the way it was written, they couldn't live there. They could go work there. They can live. So it looked like, oh, it's all these yeah. jobs, right? Yeah. Oh, jobs for the black community, jobs for in, in, in the cities, right? Instead of being in the country. And he said, wait a minute, but it's actually undercutting blacks from being a part of the community. Yeah. So he came out against it. He wanted it changed. And the Democrats picked it up. Lyndon Baines Johnson, it's, it's been recorded that he actually said, I'll have those niggers voting Democrat for 200 years, 100% racist. He said, here's our chance, optics. They're against civil rights for the black community. And that became their messaging. That became their sounding board. That was what papers and again, these liberal yeah. companies, they didn't just they, yeah. they didn't just become liberal a decade or two ago. Yeah. A lot of these corporations, it's a lot deeper if you trace it back, a lot of them have 
Marxist and communist mm. uh, roots in the foundation of some of these of these uh, these papers and publications. So that became the big issue, yep. and the black community saw, hey, Civil Rights Act, uh, this Barry Goldwater is against it. Democrats are for it. Democrats are for blacks. Republicans are not. Forget the fact that the Republican Party was sta- was established as the anti-slavery party. Sure, it was established. Hello, Abraham for that Lincoln. Way. Yeah, yeah, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Uh, procl- uh, the uh, Emancipation Proclamation. Emancipation Proclamation. He, he was a Republican. Uh, the list just goes on and on. Frederick Frederick Douglass. Um, you know, there was there were blacks in the Republican Party. In Congress, I think it was close. It was over fifty years before there was ever a, a Democrat, a Black Democrat in Congress. Wow. Wow. And same with the Senate. So, unfortunately, it's a lie that has permeated the Black community for, for generations. Sixty years, yeah. sixty years since the sixties. Yeah. But I think that you know, my hope and prayer, and yeah. my whole goal and mission with my book and with what I do is to wake up as many as possible, including yeah. the Black community, uh, to the truth of what's taking place and get people to vote based on policies. Yeah. Not, not on people or party. Yeah. In the meantime, you know, you keep you keep taking the shots. You do you, Candace Owens, you guys keep continue to take the shots. You know, I see a lot more black conservatives starting to come up. You know, Prager U is doing a good job of mm-hmm. of establishing that turning point USA with uh, yeah. Charlie Craig is doing yeah. a good job of yeah, establishing that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Candace. Yeah, for sure. Um what what so if if I am watching this right now, I'm saying, you know what? I, I'm, I'm vibing with their, David J., uh, David J. Harris Jr. I I, I want to be my own brand. I want to be my own advocate. I want to continue to champion. I want to do what David's doing. How would you encourage them to get started? To say, I want to be an advocate too. I want to go out there and then speak this message and be part of the conservative movement and, and help people understand. Hey, there's a reason why you should vote. And here's how important it is, and here's why you should have your your words be heard, et cetera, et cetera. What I would say for every person, because we're all different is what issues matter to you, right? For me, the crux of the issue is being pro-life. Like we found out when my wife's mom was was in her last days battling cancer, mm-hmm. that she ultimately lost that battle, but she she won heaven. Um, but we found out in her, last, in her last days that she almost aborted Jennifer. Wow. Like it kind of accidentally came out. My wife's aunt was over helping us with with uh, Jennifer's mom, yeah, because hospice was coming in, and mm-hmm. and uh, Jennifer's aunt said to Jennifer's mom, her sister, she was like, "Man, Jeanette, aren't you glad you left that abortion clinic Ooh, and had Jennifer slipped out? Just slipped out. She had no idea that Jen- that Jennifer's mom had never told her. So Jennifer found out that she almost didn't make it. Her mom was single. The dad wasn't in the picture. She was, you know, financially not in a very good position." She, you know, emotionally wasn't a good position. She didn't think she could bring a a baby into this earth. And she went to have an abortion at the last minute. She changed her mind and left. Yeah, wow. So I wouldn't be the man I am today. We wouldn't have the two amazing daughters we have today. So that was, so we're we're unapologetically pro-life. But we're all different. It's like, find out which issues matter to you. Okay. And then research those issues, find people that talk about those issues, know the details about about the issues that matter to you. And then for those out there that are listening that have wanted to, like I shared this the last time I spoke in Colorado, I said, how many people in the audience, there was close to 500 people there, I said, how many people in the audience have wanted to make a video about a certain topic, but you haven't made it yet? I wanna see your hand. Probably a dozen hands or so shot up. Okay. And that's people that were willing to admit it, right? Yeah, right. And I said, make the video. Why don't you think people do? They they, they they don't, I'm sorry, they don't. Yeah, I mean, just, they're, they're, they're afraid of, you know, negative reactions, negative response. Nobody's going to like my video. Nobody's going to watch it. It's like, you know what? Forget all that stuff. Now, you know, I've, I've had some really viral videos and sometimes I'll think of those things. Yeah. And God, I really felt like God spoke to me uh, years ago, which gave me peace to just keep making them. And he said, make the video for the one person. If it impacts just one, will it be worth it? Do you see a certain person when you look into the lens of the camera? No, I don't see one person. I okay. just I just see and hear the message I want to deliver, and I just try oh. to deliver that. Okay. But a nice, uh, something that's actually in the book, um, after I shared that first video that went viral, uh, and my wife had actually shared a post talking a little bit about how she almost didn't make it to Earth, a friend of mine reached out to me a year later, and he said, David, I just have to tell you, <laughs> he said, I had a friend back when you made that video that was pregnant, and she was contemplating having an abortion. 
And he said, I didn't know if I had the right way to say it or the yeah. right words to say. So I sent her your video and I sent her your wife's post. And then he sent me a little picture of a baby. He said, this is little baby Ian. She decided to have the baby. <laughs> Wow. So it's like, wow. even if one person, if it just impacts one person. one person. So I share that to everybody. Make the video and put it out there and pray and believe that just, just one person. Yeah. Even if it's just one, will it yeah. be okay? I asked you about the biggest threats in America. What is your biggest frustration in helping influence America? Biggest frustration? Um I think right now one of the one of the biggest frustrations is just the the the, the censorship that we see on on okay. big tech platforms, because as you see on Instagram they're silencing my voice. I've got a red warning in the back of my Facebook page that's I've got two point two million followers over there, but I haven't grown in a year because they shut it off. They like they, 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 sh they shut the reach yeah. down. Yeah. So I mean I, I they they lifted it like in April of last year and I gained one point five million followers in like six months and they yeah. turned it off again. Yeah. Haven't grown. I've lost followers now. Yeah. So I think the biggest frustration is is that big tech is just unchecked right now using 230 of the Communications Decency Act to do whatever the heck they want to whoever they want. So the voices that people actually want to hear and appreciate, we can't even be the voice. Yeah. So that's probably the biggest frustration. And I've got a friend of mine that started it's starting the uh, he started the Social Media Freedom Foundation that has the best case to actually make the Supreme Court acknowledge the issue with Section 230 of CDA and change it. And he's gonna he's gonna bring his case, he's actually gonna sue the United States of America <laughs> because he, he, he sued through the courts okay. and no court all the way to the Supreme Court, none of them heard his case. So he's been denied his due process. So he he's laid out this entire foundation for why um, he should have his due process in court. And he's not the only person, but because he went all the way to the Supreme Court and was denied, yep. he was denied due, due process under the Fifth Amendment. So he breaks down um, amazingly, and I'm gonna—I think I'm gonna join the suit. I'm praying about that right now as well. Okay, but it'll be a suit against the United States of America. It'll right. have to go. It'll it'll go to Florida first, right. to the Florida uh, Supreme Court, because it's based in Florida. But then, if we can get the backing of DeSantis, and he's already got the backing of some other powerful senators and congressmen, yep. um, if we can get that backing, and if DeSantis backs this, it'll go right to the Supreme Court. Wow! And if the Supreme Court looks at it, they'll have to address. Mm -hmm how absolutely lenient big tech is with using 230 to do whatever they want. Who do you think is going to run? Do you think it's going to be Trump, DeSantis? DeSantis, you know, Trump? I, I, I'd love to see Trump and DeSantis, you know, on the yeah. same ticket. Um, I'd love to see that happen. Uh, either one of them would be better than what we've got right now. And we need massive change. And mm -hmm. I think America's waking up to that as well. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love... President Trump and what he's, what he tried to do, what he did when he was in office, what he was trying to do for our country, yep. and uh, what we need a real leader in the White House, and it's yep. definitely not. I mean, the, what Democrat on the planet yep. in, in our country yep. could offer anything of substance? It's like look at our VP; yep. she didn't even make it through the primaries. <laughs> her own Democrat Party didn't even want her. Now she's the <laughs> vice president of our country. Are you kidding me? Right. right. So, America is waking up. Parents right. are waking up. Right. And we need to take back the House and the Senate in 2022. Yep. And again, if there's a Hail Mary chance yep. that Trump can be appointed, reappointed, and then stated as president, it, we better pray it happens because we don't want three and a half more years of Biden-Kamala. Gotcha. Or Kamala-Biden, yeah, even what yeah. Joe said. Yeah. Kamala-Harris administration. Speed around here. Your thoughts. Sure. Okay. Um, who do you think is the most powerful? The government? Who is most powerful in America? The government... Wall Street, tech companies, Silicon Valley or Wall Street, if you were to put them in order. Who do you think the number one overall is the most powerful? I'd say tech companies are right Really, now. they'd yeah. be number one. Yeah, because no, they're, Not they're, the they're, nobody's checking them. Okay. Nobody's checking them whatsoever. And then it'd be the government. I mean, they're, they're okay. the way that they're, it'd be, it'd be a toss up between them two because yeah. the way that Joe right now is issuing all these mandates, I mean, yeah. look at what's happening with all the travel. Sure. Right? All the all the airlines mm -hmm. that are mandating these vaccines. That yep. came up from Joe. The Got CEO, uh, I think it's Mr. Kelly, the CEO of Southwest came yep. out and said, he's never been a fan of mandates, government yep. mandates, but when the government puts a mandate that businesses over 100 employees have to get their people vaccinated or they could face a $700,000 fine, that's that's tyranny. It's, it's yeah. So yep. it's like, it's a toss up. 
Got it. So tech company, government, who, who else would you rank in that uh, continued order? Who Wall else was in there? Wall, Wall Street. Wall Street's losing a lot of its steam. I mean, there, you know, so much is going to crypto these days, and it's so volatile. Yeah. Uh, and I'm in it a little bit. I dabble a little bit. But um, when Jimmy Diamond says uh, Bitcoin is nothing, you think that's because he's protecting, you know, the good of boys in Wall Street? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah I'm sure. Yeah. And then even just look at, you know, uh, platforms like Robinhood. And there's another one that I'm actually going to be a part of. Um, that's a uh, an app that you'll be able to like if you trade, yeah. you'll be able to sign in and everybody that follows you will be able to see your trades. Really? If you want to, them okay. to. Right. Yeah. You can put them up there. But the benefit it's like for a Venmo. That, it's like a Venmo where everybody sees what you're spending money on. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah right? kind of, yeah. yeah. But it'll be, it's a very, it's a very techie app. Got it. So, but you'd be able to follow all the biggest traders. Interesting. Interesting. Right? You can follow politicians. You can follow yeah. Pelosi if you want. But you'll see, because all that data is public record, yeah. right? When our trade's made, you'll see who's making what trade and when. So that right there is depowering. It's, it's taking power from Wall Street, these big Wall Street guys, right. because it's not up to these big Wall Street guys to listen to how you're going to grow some wealth. Mm -hmm. The average trader can do it from an yep. app on their phone. Yep. Um, speaking of the, 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 the mandates you know, with the healthcare workers, you know, I, I saw in your page a nurse saying, listen, I'm ready to go to work. I can't go to work because I don't want to take the vaccine. Yeah, Tara. I'm a pilot. Right, Tara. I'm a yeah. pilot. And uh, I'm a pilot, and pilots are doing yeah, it. Pilots yeah, pilots are doing too as well. Uh, what do you what do you think is going to be the resolution? Because they're obviously standing up. They're they're fighting against the tyranny too as well. What do you think that this is going to lead to? Well, I love seeing it when they stand up and they say no. Right. I just watched actually Project Veritas released another insider video of a guy that's worked for Pfizer for 20 years. Mm -hmm. He said the voicemail he left? No, no, it's oh. an actual video. Oh wow! Okay. It was released like two hours ago. Wow! Saw it right before I came in here. It's a guy that's worked for Pfizer for 20 years, and he said he doesn't trust the vaccine. He said that they, there's no way they got the proper data to make sure that it's safe, but he took it because he had no choice. A lot of people, somebody commented on one of my posts on Instagram. She, she messaged me, actually. She said, I feel so stupid that I took the vaccine, but I had to keep making a living. Yeah. Wow. That's the, that's the cold... Uh, scary reality of what's taking place right now. But I pull I pull behind the scenes a little bit. I love seeing that happen. And if that continues to happen, they'll have to, it's it's big, it's corporations mm -hmm. that are going to have to say, look, we can't keep doing these mandates. Mm -hmm. Screw you, government, big government, yep. in, this, in your overreach. Yep. Uh, and we're not going to pay the fines either. I mean, yep. it's going to have to come down to that and some some cases that, that, get, that go to the Supreme Court because uh, it'll all be proved it's unconstitutional. All this yep. stuff that Joe's doing is, right. is totally unconstitutional. Yep. But behind the scenes, I always think about what happens when you've got all the police officers that will not comply and quit, nurses, doctors will not comply yep. and quit, military will not comply mm -hmm. and, quit yeah, yeah. and quit, pilots, uh, what happens when you take all the people that will not comply out of the equation? Who is John Galt? <laughs> now all you have are, are yes people. Right, right. That they'll do they'll do whatever they have to yeah, they'll do whatever come. they're told to do. Yeah, yeah. That's the scary thing. Yeah, there's no there's, as Americans, it's a, tip, it's a tipping of the balance. Yep. When you've only got cops out there that are willing to listen to yeah. whatever their mandates are, look at what's happening in Australia. Australia. Yep. Yep. Where well, they are, I mean, and some of them are just power hungry. I, I saw this. I posted the video. This one cop that was choking this lady because she didn't have a mask on, just because of a mask. And they're throwing people, yeah. you know, in uh, in solitary confinement. Yep. It's a very scary and dark time. And you know what? Scripturally, it says that's going to happen in the last days. Sure it is. You know, as, as, a, as a person now, I'm looking at these different career people are making a shift. You know, you're an entrepreneur. You know, the, the reason why people watch the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel is because they want to think, strategize, and yeah. become, you know, a cash flow millionaire. So, how are, you, how, are you, how are you guiding yourself to make sure you make moves and you are, you know, you're not beholden to all these mandates and you're not reactive to what's going on? How you stay in front of the game? Well, uh, I mean, I've got some practical things that I do. I've got some practical investments. I've, I'm in a part of a of a couple, a few different startups. I'm diversifying. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, I'm, I'm looking into doing, getting more gold and silver. Um, I'm also prepping for food with prepare preparelikedavid.com. <laughs> right? I partnered yeah. with this yeah. with this uh, food supply company, yeah. pre preparelikedavid.com, and you save like a hundred bucks off a three month supply. So I'm like, I'm diversifying on things that make sense, things that are important to me. Yeah. And, uh, and you always got to pray, man. You got to yeah. keep your head and your heart right. Yeah. And believe that God will lead you and guide you, which I think he is. He led me here today. And, and, and as you continue to advocate, you know, for the conservative movement and, and you're, you're you know, obviously for the community of entrepreneurship, the black community, your family, how does your faith allow you to make certain decisions 
and not waver from all the pushback because because a guy like you man you get you're gonna get trolled left and right and you said you know a lot of people don't see the dms you get but people can see very very clearly what you get on publicly in your profile and people love you hate you so how do you allow your faith to strengthen in this whole process and guide you well it's how i start my day and i'm a big believer and it's like prayer is not just you know getting in your bedroom and getting on your knees and praying right Sure, that's one aspect of it. Yep. But the that's the, you know having your alone time with God is kind of the icing on the cake. Mm-hmm. When you can have your alone time, like yeah. I have a secret place that's just me and God, and I turn on yeah. worship music, and I enter into worship, and I'm praying, and I'm and I'm I'm engaging with His presence, and I feel His presence. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's like the icing on the cake. But the cake is just understanding that He's with me all throughout the day. I don't have to be in some certain place to talk to God. That's right. I can talk to Him right now. Right. Right? I try right. to engage when I'm in conversations. Right. God, where are you taking this conversation? What do you want me to talk about? So I, I, I'm a big believer in having a relationship yep. with the creator of the universe that wants us to know him as daddy, as Abba, right? as, a, yeah. as a father. And uh, it means it's just a part of who I am. And I know from myself and from my history I've shared, yeah. I'm a lot better person when I'm doing that and focused on that. <laughs> Amen. Than, than trying to do life my own way. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any aspirations, political aspirations? I don't have any political aspirations at this point. No, I believe that God's positioned me to be a mouthpiece and to be a voice for this generation and this time. So I'm just going to continue to do that to the best of my ability and focus on that and then see what doors God opens. But if he at some point impresses on me really strong, and I'll have to hear it from him because I'm not just going to go throw my hat in the ring to go do it. Yep. You know, I think uh, I'm good friends with uh, Dan Crenshaw. And he he wants really? Congress, seat, right? Yeah, here yeah, down in Houston, Navy Seal. Yep. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. the, yeah. Badass with the uh, with one eye yep. uh, that SNL tried to rip on and that gave him and apologized. Right, had him on to apologize. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, he's like, it's hard. He's like, it's tough. And he's doing a great job of of actually still being a mouthpiece, right, and sharing stuff while still being in Washington. But it's hard on you know the family, and he doesn't have any yeah. kids. So it's, but he's got to have a place in DC. He's got a yeah. place here. So it's not easy. So I, I have to know for sure yeah. that God's calling me to that before I just go do that. Gotcha. So David, obviously uh, people can find you on, on your website. Any final thoughts you want to say? Anything that you uh, want to get off your heart to uh, viewers of the Seven Figure Squad? I just say thank you all so much for for listening, tuning in. Share this if it blessed you. Uh, my book is an easy read, but it's a good it's a good uh, nugget of why I'm who I am, and I think it's it's prophetic as well. You know, prophecy is is uh, um, somebody's prophecy is is a testimony, right? What God did for somebody else, He'll do He'll do for you. He's no respecter of persons. So the stuff that I share in there, which is mostly about who I am and why I believe what I do, uh, but there's some other good nuggets in there as well. So. You know, I just, I appreciate people's prayers and support. And again, like we said in the beginning, if you're battling something, you're dealing with something, just know that God is good, that he loves you, and that he has a plan, and that you don't have to do it on your own. You don't have to live this life on your own. And you just, you can start any moment of the day just acknowledging that, thanking him, and inviting him into your life. And when you do that, I believe amazing things will happen, and I would know because I'm living proof. So. But we can't let you go, man, without your signature into the camera. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> the big said, guys, let us know your thoughts, your comments, your fear. Put it in the comment section below. We've got all the links to contact with David J. Harris Jr. Get, get his shirt. shirt. Let's get his go book. Brandon. Let's get going. Let's David go. Brandon. Com. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, make sure you uh, follow him also on Instagram too as well if you haven't done so already. That being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our Facebook business page, My Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. On behalf of David J. Harris Jr., I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue to love smart and be mighty smart today. God bless you guys. God bless.